Hey YouTube, Mike here. How are we doing today? Hope you all had a nice week. Today I like to do uh, my second or uh, second tip on uh, wood, some woodworking stuff. Today I like to go and show you um, a few things that I have for sandpaper, hand sandpaper. Now we all have the you know the, the, either the machines or the, the, the palm sanders, the half pad sander, random mobile sanders. But sometimes you got to get and you got to get in there with hand sanding. Now you all know and you all see my favorite sanding block, the best tool sanding block. I will add um, the model number um, in the description below. But I do have quite a bit of other stuff that I use for hand sanding. Uh, a lot of well, my pen turning and to use the full sheets to cut it down. Now, I do store off my sandpaper in two sustainers. Actually, I do have a third one, and that is stored in the sanding cart that I built for the two um, uh, sanders that I have from uh, Rikon. But today also, I like to show you a little um, trick that I have for cutting sandpaper and also making a sanding block. What I have here is a piece of three-quarter inch um, sandable plywood cut to eight, 12 and a quarter by 12 because the sandpaper is 9 by 11. Your hacksaw blade, which you're going to use to cut it, and I guess you already pretty much know what I, how I'm getting at, is um, just about 12 and a quarter inches. And we're basically we're going to use the hacksaw blade like when you're ripping uh, saran wrap out of the roll. Um, that's basically what you're going to do. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to take your um, piece of plywood, you're going to make sure that the end that you're going to use is, is pretty much perfectly straight. Then you're going to lay down your hacksaw blade, getting it right to the edge of both ends and the front, and then mark it. Mark the two holes. Now, you can add a ruler to it. What I like to do is just take a pencil. Now, most of the time, you're going to be cutting the sandpaper into kind of like four inch by three inch, four inch by four inch pads. So just take your ruler and mark up every inch of the board to about five inches. Give you a little extra if you want to go six, go six inches. Then take your square and a black magic marker, a fine felt tip, and scribe your lines down. You don't have to go all the way because you're only going to cut on one side of this board. So now you have six inch markers all the way down the board. Now, you don't have to be that accurate if you're not building a piano. You want to get it within, a, you know, when you're going to fold it and sand it or use the sanding block that I'm going to show you to make. Okay, then just pilot drill two small holes right through the lines you made. And take number eight screws, three quarters of an inch, and two number eight washers. Put a washer over, and I just lost that washer. Put a washer over one end, put your screw through. And let's see if we find the washer. Yep, there it is. Line up your other washer, line up your screw hole, take your screw, tighten it down. Now, take your sandpaper, say you want to make a four inch piece, right there. Hold your fingers down on the uh, hacksaw blade, 
and there's your cut. You don't have to buy nothing expensive. That's how you. That's all you're making. That's it. If you want, you could add some rubber feet to it and store it away. All right. Now, this little sanding block. I'm going to show you some blocks that I made up already. And this here was actually, a, they don't make it, it's been discontinued for years. This was for the Porta Cable half sheet sander. And basically, you would insert the rolls, rip it on here for the size, but I still kept it because I use, it's, it's um, 100 grit and uh, 180 grit. And what I did was I took three pieces of plywood. I took a piece of half inch plywood, a piece of three quarter plywood, and a piece of 13 sixteenths. And these I used when I was doing my slot car boxes. And what I did was I would just rip off a piece probably like say three inches and just put it onto this block and I made the block so that it was the exact size of the um, the length of the plywood that I cut so it was the same size as this width which was four and a half inches and now when I do either a dado or a rabbit I can get it in there and sand it for the two different thicknesses of plywood, or cut a small piece again. Now the half inch one, you actually, it's, it is a little bit bigger. So I do wrap it kind of around it. Because most of my dados and my rabbits were half inch for the half inch plywood. And now there's my sanding block. Then what I also did was I found a guy that had rubber pieces of rubber, you leave that there. And I asked him to make me up some of these rubber blocks. Now I know you could probably, you could buy these, I, I, I did see them every, uh, now and then on the internet. But I had them cut me up kind of like a 12 inch by 12 inch piece, marked it up and cut them. And it is half inch, quarter inch, and three sixteenths. And basically, what I did was I just cut, I cut a piece just a tad bit longer than the length of this, and then just fold it onto this piece of rubber. And you can, you can cut down the end if you want to, making sure you don't cut the rubber. And now I have three rubber sanding blocks that are very flexible that I can also sand inside of either dados or rabbits. Okay, now say you want to make a block. You want to make a, some type of block. Well, what I came up with was I took a piece of three quarter inch pine and a piece of three quarter by three, so it's three quarter by three, three inch cut and three quarter by three quarter. And what I did was I would take this and, now this is if I was doing say, like if I was making that Dungeons, when I'm gonna make that Dungeons and Dragons table, I'll make this thing and just keep a piece of Okay, glue, why aren't you coming out? You're gonna hack the rush. Here we go. You see, I'm making kind of a sanding block. And it's just kind of temporary. It's for when you're gonna use something that you're going to use one or two types of sandpaper through the whole project. nail it on, screw it on with some fast cap pan head screws. Now, what I take is I take, I have this cork that I line drawers with. Put the 
cork onto the sanding block. Mark it. And I use this, it's, it's kind of like a draw liner. Cut out the piece of cork. Try to get the paper off when you have no nails. Come on. Here we go. Okay. Now the cork is there to give it a little bit of like a, a spongy bottom. Press it on. Now, I already have it pre-cut. I take some double-sided carpet tape. Cut it a little bit shy of the cork. Well, this is one's going to be a project. Trying to get off the paper. But we are determined to do it. Oh, look at that! Win a win a chicken dinner today. And then just kind of. Put on your piece of sandpaper. Trim it down the edge. And now you made yourself a sanding block. Clean up the glue a little bit. And now you made yourself a sanding block. And you can take your marker and write on it, this happens to be 100. You can put 100 on there. Say you want to make this too. Scrap wood. Scrap wood. You don't need to buy anything expensive, 20 bucks. Scrap piece of wood. You, you don't even need this. You can actually grab this if you want to. And then there's your sanding block, whatever you want to do. If you want, I'll, you tell, I'll just take the edge down with the fast half quarter round. I'll take the edge down, and that's it. There's your sanding block. When you're done with the project, you can keep it. Um, what I use to take off, especially off the wood, this comes off pretty easy, but with this, I hit it with a heat gun. I just hit it with the heat gun, and it melts the uh, glue on the tape, and I'm able to peel it off. You just got to watch, you may peel the cork off. But it's inexpensive. I mean, this roll of cork probably cost me maybe six bucks, seven bucks, and it's like 25 feet. But there's your sanding block. Quick and simple. All right. Um, let me just show you some of the other sanding. Your sheets of sandpaper. Go to Staples, Office Depot, whatever. You can get it at Target. You know those, that little, the little file you keep records in, bills? Ta da! I keep my sandpaper in it. And I just mark on the tab. 80, 100, 150, 200, 400, and then I purchased the other day the new Festool sandpaper, but it's so heavily marked on the back of it, 120 and 240, I don't bother marking the tab because it's so heavily marked. Pretty, pretty good. It's the granite sandpaper. Pretty nice. Very, 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 very heavy duty. But that's it. That's what it is. It's one of those file folders. There's uh, 10 pockets in there. You can keep pretty much all of your sandpaper in there and just pick it out as you need it. Don't need no drawers. Don't need no fancy storage. Just keep it in one of these storage containers. So in with the uh, sustainers, I keep my best tool sanding blocks. I keep a 60, a 120, and a 220. And then I keep their new, their steel wool, okay, 800 grit for the polyurethane. Then I found this little sanding pad, and I have 100, 120, and 200 grit. It's a little tiny sanding pad, hook and loop. I think I got this at Lowe's. 
and it works really nice for when you're doing the end of like a piece of three quarter, a piece of half inch. Because very nice um, sanding, and it's very, it's very cut. So it's, it's like a foam, it's, and it fits very nice in your hand. Small, but it's for, for small, little, delicate work. And then in this other sustainer, I keep my my other steel wool. I keep the replacement spindle sanders. <clears throat> I do have an 80 and a 120 grit <clears throat> 3M sanding. That you, it's wet sanding. It's the stuff you would use for auto body. And I have one of those 3M pads. Uh, I would be showing it to you if I could find it. I keep my, my sanding belts. This is actually for, it's the one inch by 36 inch. This is for uh, metal. And then the other ones are for wood. And then for my air sander. And then all the other sanding pieces in here are for the pens. Okay, I think that's uh, about it there, YouTube. Um, I hope this was helpful. And, oh, one other thing. Um, I'll just pan up. I have those rolls of Festool. They're 80 feet. They're around $65. And it's a 180 and a 240. And as you can see, it rolls out and it's perforated right there and it's perforated and they're four and a half by four and a half inch sheets uh, let me get this back here there we go and it was sixty five dollars for the entire roll and it's roughly about eighty feet okay um, I hope, I hope this video was helpful and you learned a few tips. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for all of the subscribes, all of the likes, and all of the comments. I'll answer any comment. And if anybody wants a Mike Woodshop sticker, please, um, I'm going to include my email again in the um, description below. Just email me with your um, mailing address and we'll send you out a sticker. Okay, YouTube? Um, you all have a nice weekend, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.